So very good morning to all. Once again, it is our pleasure to welcome you to welcome you all to the Knowledge 4.0 webinar series. This Knowledge 4.0 webinar series is one of the unique and uh, distinct initiative of uh, Chennai for Technology. And so far, we have conducted uh, more than uh, 300 webinars, and 400 experts have come and talked. Uh, in the, the, their wonderful uh, experience and their learnings to this in this wonderful forum. So we have uh, called eminent professors from academia, and researchers from research industry, from international and national universities, and international national organizations, and the consultants, those who are familiar in their field, have been called so far, and they are uh, providing their uh, wonderful experience in this forum. In this way, today we have Dr. P. Sangeeta, who is going to talk about uh, wearable technologies. It is a great pleasure to welcome you to this wonderful forum, madam. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And uh, Chennai Yusha Technology was established in the year 2010 by our chairman, C.P. Sriram, who is one of the first generation successful entrepreneur, industrialist, and managing director of MK Gulfa Companies. This Knowledge 4.0 webinar series is being successful under the support of support of management of technology technology and especially from our honorable chairman P. Srira. And today our institute is, being, is at the top second position among all other private engineering colleges in Tamil Nadu. So it is my great pleasure to welcome you all the participants to this wonderful forum. And it is my great pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. V. Sangeeta uh, to this uh, wonderful this participant. And she has completed her uh, B Electronics and Communication in Panimura Engineering College, then ME Communication System from Anaya City CEG campus, and has completed her doctoral degree in Design and Performance Enhancement of Micro, uh, micro uh, Couplers from Anaya City in the year 2017. She has started her career as, as, as an Astro Professor in St. Joseph College Institute of Technology, Chennai. Then further, she she is uh, being a consultant at Invicura India Private Limited Chennai. So she has filed two Indian patents and she has published more than uh, 10 national international journals. And during his uh, PhD, uh, PhD period, she has got Anna's Engineering Research Fellowship. And her area, in, area of interest includes microscope components, antennas, RF and microwaves engineering, and Internet of Things. So it is our great pleasure to have you in this forum. And let me request you to share this session, Mara. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you for the introduction, sir. And thank you. Thank you for the entire management, uh, the principal, sir, and all of you for this opportunity. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yes, ma'am. You can, please. OK. So I'll just uh, share my screen. Please. So let's quickly start with the session. So can you see the yes, uh, full screen Our slide? Can, you can go out. If, if there is okay. any interruption, I will interact with you. Sure. OK. OK. So uh, good morning, one and all. So I'm so happy to uh, share this topic. So let's, let's not talk much. Let's just quickly move on. So as far as the topic is concerned, uh, it's beacons and variable technology in IoT. Okay. So there are three major terms in this. So first is beacons, and then there's variable technology, and then there's IoT. So uh, of this, this will be our flow of the presentation. So firstly, we'll see about IoT, and then about the uh, beacon technology, and then about the variable technology. And uh, moving on, we'll see how both together, when integrated, will uh, be applied in several uh, situations. And finally, uh, how this particular technology can help in mitigating the effects of COVID. Fine. So, uh, so let's first start with IoT. So as we all know, IoT is Internet of Things. So what thing are we talking about? So it is literally anything. Okay. So it could be as small as a rat, which has a biochip transponder, to uh, an elephant, to a human being who's having a heart monitor implant, to uh, an automobile, to a pillow, anything and everything, a smartphone, a computer, everything can be an IoT, can be a thing in the IoT, but it has to have two aspects. Firstly, it should have a unique identifier. So that ID should belong to only that thing and not to any other thing. Secondly, it should be capable of transferring data over a network. 
so if it has these two capabilities then anything can become a part of the iot so as you can see in this particular picture there are many things which are connected in the cloud and uh, uh, over here you can see that uh, all the things they are not only part of one small place it's across the globe okay so uh, sitting at home sitting in india somebody can control their home which is in the united states of america so they can get to know the temperature the humidity level and so many aspects of uh, that so uh, these are all the advantages of iot and industries they use this for enhancing the customer service and for improving their decision making capabilities so we'll see about all this in the next slides so uh, the important applications of iot uh, so first application is the smart home so uh, yes, we are all aware of smart homes, right? So uh, there can be an app and with that app, we can uh, watch everything like the temperature, the luminance, the ventilation, uh, even we can control the gas and everything, uh, okay? the lock system, security system, everything. So uh, in industries, IoT plays a very, very, very huge role. So there are, there are lots of processes which happens in the industry. The raw materials, they come and the processing happens, the manufacturing, actual manufacturing happens. So there are so many uh, instruments and devices which perform manufacturing. So they could uh, be, there could be a defect. So sensors will see if there is a defect. So for seeing all that and then assembling the products and placing the assembled products. So everything has to be analyzed. So anywhere, if there is a fault, if there is a deficit of a raw material, so uh, at sensor to check everything and everything and keep an analytics of all that. So uh, for all these things, if there is any problem, there can be an alert. So for a lot of applications it is used in industries and uh, yes smart city you must have had uh, a separate session on that uh, it is nothing but a city in which every aspect of it is centrally connected uh, the transport system the energy system the water system or uh, the transport or uh, anything the healthcare facility so everything is integrated so if you want to reach a destination you can just see your app and you can get to know which is the next bus or the next train that is coming up and where it is in real time, not just a schedule, but you can uh, locate it in real time. Like you, you see it, your Ola or Uber cabs. And finally, the industry in which IoT is thriving is the retail market. So we'll see about that in the future slides, right? So we'll start with the, uh, the terminology beacons, right? So when I mentioned the term beacons, what is a beacon it's basically a device which uh, constantly transmits saying that i'm there okay so it is constantly visible and it is attracting attention so when i mention the word beacon the picture that comes to my mind is that of a lighthouse as you can see a lighthouse is nothing it simply transmits light it, it does not have any information but a sailor can interpret various informations from the lighthouse so he can decipher the distances from the lighthouse based on the intensity he can uh, determine the angle to which he has to uh, take to reach the shore so so many in informations can be deciphered but the lighthouse as such does not emit anything it's simple light that it is emitting right so uh, similarly in old days in olden days they used fire uh, for indicating the onset of war or for some celebration uh, in airports there are beacons that constantly transmit the weather report and there are handheld beacons and the Wi-Fi also has a beacon, which constantly sends its identity. So uh, if you can see on your mobile phone, you can constantly see the Wi-Fi connection that you're on. OK, so these are all some examples of beacons. Now, uh, the beacon that we are going to be talking is the Bluetooth low energy beacon. So when I'm saying Bluetooth, uh, it is not the same Bluetooth that we use for uh, our headphone connection, right? It is different. It is Bluetooth low energy. So let's see what is a simple difference between the classic Bluetooth and Bluetooth low energy. So the classic Bluetooth requires constant pairing. So you need to be constantly connected and constantly paired. But this is not the case in Bluetooth low energy. And uh, in classic Bluetooth, you are transferring rich content like video or audio. But in low energy, you are only uh, transmitting small bits of data. OK, so based on that, the uh, distance, everything is determined based on that. So obviously, it is low energy. So the power consumption and the current consumption of BLE is much, much less compared to the classic Bluetooth. right? And uh, the applications are also uh, varying dependent on that. The classic Bluetooth is for streaming audio, video, for connecting uh, wireless headphones. 
uh, and Bluetooth Low Energy is used for uh, customer marketing applications and for location tracking, location tracking precisely. So let's note the word location tracking and let's move on, right? So uh, BLE beacons. So what are they? What are they basically? So here we can see lots of BLE beacons. So this is a beacon by Qualcomm. So uh, there are so many, so many beacons which have come up in market these days. So let, let me tell you what they are. So as such, as I said, a beacon simply transmits something. OK, so this BLE beacon transmits a Bluetooth low energy data packet. OK, so it transmits simply its identifier, its UID. As I said, anything can be an, a part of the IoT if it has a UID. So the beacon also transmits its UID. OK, so any app which is compatible can pick up the signal and it can infer lots of information which the beacon is transmitting. So it is used for location tracking basically. And uh, initially, the initial version was Bluetooth 4.0. So its accuracy uh, was in the range of a few meters. And then the latest version, which is Bluetooth 5.1, it can uh, provide accuracy in centimeter level, OK? And uh, the angle of the antenna, the angle of arrival also can be measured. So that's the advancement of Bluetooth 5.1. Now, when I'm saying that blue, this BLE beacons are used for location tracking, uh, the question that will come in your mind is, when we have the wonderful Google Maps for location tracking, why do we need this? So this is uh, a timeline feature of Google Maps, OK? Wherein you have, at this day, at this time, this person has started from home, then he has reached a restaurant, then he has reached a school, and then he's back home at this time. So when you're able to track a person so well using Google Maps, then what is the need for BLE beacons? So uh, let me tell you, there are some challenges. GPS, th there's a limitation. It cannot track accurately indoors. So if you want to track somebody within an office campus or within a shopping mall or within an airport, then definitely BLE beacons are the key. And secondly, altitude information in which level the person is that also cannot be uh, given by gps so precisely more for indoor monitoring for indoor tracking outdoors also BLE can be used but for precise tracking within an industry within a warehouse within a company or within an airport BLE is very much useful okay so when i'm talking about BLE uh, there are two terms that i should never miss that is I beacon and eddy stone. Okay, so these are the ones that have laid the foundation for BLE, I would say. So uh, I beacon, as the name suggests, it is definitely by Apple. So uh, yes, when Apple, it, it's actually a protocol. Okay, so how the data packet that is transmitted by the beacon should be. So that was initially determined by Apple and it was termed as I beacon. So uh, healthy competition is good anywhere and everywhere. So uh, Eddie Stone, Google came up with Eddie Stone, which is again a protocol for the beacons, right? So uh, there is iBeacon on one side and there's Eddie Stone on the other side. So does that mean that only iPhones and iPads can uh, are compatible with iBeacon? No, iBeacon as well as Eddie Stone are compatible with both Android and iOS devices. So that is something we have to be clear. So if a beacon is transmitting an iBeacon packet, any phone can receive. Similarly, if a uh, beacon is transmitting an Eddie Stone packet, any uh, phone can receive. So what is the difference between the two? Firstly, iBeacon is a proprietary software. So it is owned by, it's controlled by Apple. So its specifications and everything are controlled by Apple. Whereas Eddie Stone is open source. So it uh, gives some kind of a flexibility and freedom for software developers everywhere to customize the packet according to their needs. So supposing they want to transmit some extra sensor details, they can do that. They can modify the format accordingly, according to their needs. So that is the first basic difference. Second difference is iBeacon uh, transmits only one kind of a packet, So which is it's UUID. So UID is unique identifier. UUID is universal unique identifier. And then there's a major part in which certain uh, bits are transmitted and the minor part in which certain other bits are transmitted. This is the only one kind of a format uh, which is done by iBeacon. Uh, whereas the Eddie Stone offers three different kinds of formats that can be transmitted. First is Eddie Stone UID. So this Eddie Stone UID is similar to iBeacon. 
okay so it's also a uid transmission second uh, is eddy stone url so in this you will be able to transmit and uh, transmit a url so the moment a mobile phone receives the url and you click on it you will be able to open the website and view it okay and then there is eddy stone tlm which is eddy stone telemetry so this is specifically used for sensors so uh, if a temperature sensor humidity sensors are there so they sense a value and using a beacon you can transmit those values so that's the basic difference between i beacon and eddy stone so let's keep this in mind because this is what is the kind of packet that is going to be transmitted by a beacon now so when i'm talking about beacons what are they composed of when you see on the outer you can only see a casing okay so you can just see a covering so that is a casting which is usually a silicone casting and inside there's an arm computer because beacons these days they not only transmit there's a lot of processing there's a little bit of memory that is required so there's an arm computer that's needed and there's a bluetooth smart bluetooth smart is nothing but ble it's the other name for ble so a bluetooth smart connectivity module is there and there's an antenna which is designed at 2.4 gigahertz so 2.4 gigahertz is the bluetooth frequency so uh, it's designed at that frequency and it's a monopole antenna and it's a meandered monopole antenna meandering is done for reducing the circuit size right and then there's a battery so as i said it is low energy so the same one single battery will last for years so uh, there's a battery there and there's a low level software which is called a firmware so that's the composition of a beacon so what do these beacons do how do they work as i said the beacons this uh, ble does not continuously get connected it simply blinks it transmits a small data packet it waits then it transmits another data packet and it waits okay so the intensity the uh, strength the strength of the signal the interval between the transmission everything can be programmed by us so uh, depending on our application if you if we want the beacon to last longer then we can uh, probably increase the intensity uh, increase the interval so it depends on our application and our use case secondly we we are saying that it's used for trapping tracking applications so there is a value which is rssi it is received signal strength indicator okay so based on the received signal level the distance from the beacon can be estimated so based on this value the positioning of the person can be done so that's the base of it so i said rssi okay so rssi is the basic value using which you are determining the distance of the person from the beacon so it's the base for locating the position so it's received signal strength indicator so when a beacon transmits a packet a mobile will firstly receive a value called rssi okay which is the signal level that the mobile is receiving and then it will also receive a value called measured power which is the rssi at 1 meter distance right so based on the measured power and the rssi we can evaluate the reference rssi and the actual rssi we can uh, evaluate the distance now uh, this is an example actually wherein a person is carrying a beacon and he is moving so the moment he is crossing a particular room okay so this is the re receiver ble receiver like your smartphone right so the moment he is crossing a room what happens only during the opening the rssi increases and then it falls low now the person is entering a particular room over here when he is outside the rssi is low and then it goes on an increasing trend as he enters the room now when a person leaves a room the rssi is high and then as he leaves it goes low so based on these values the entry exit event of a person to and from a room can be recorded so this is about the rssi but with rssi we can estimate the distance from a beacon uh, say for example v1 is a beacon right and this dot the central dot is the position of the mobile now uh, when i estimate d1 alone the uh, mobile or the person can be anywhere along the circle right so we basically need another beacon so when we have another beacon there are two points of intersection now when we have the third beacon there is only one single point of intersection which will give the position exact position of the person to centimeter precision now there is a requirement of minimum 3 beacons to do the trial iteration and to get the accurate position of the person this is similar to the satellite communication principle right so here we can see three beacons uh, and there's a phone 
So the position can be estimated using three beacons, a minimum of three beacons if you want exact position. So uh, even this cannot, uh, uh, there will be some position jumps. So to avoid that, Kalman filters are used. So what do they do is they take up, they consider the history of measurements and uh, they evaluate. So uh, that will give a little more of accuracy. Fine, that's, uh, that's about the beacon technology. So as we have seen, what are the advantages of it? Obviously, it's going to have a long battery life, so it's less expensive and there's not much of maintenance. You have to change the battery once in a few years. And uh, accuracy is high using uh, BLE 5.1 and angle of arrival also can be measured. And uh, since you're not using any direct power supply, you uh, there's hardly any risk in the usage. And what are the challenges? Firstly, uh, some materials, okay, so like metal and concrete, it's it's an RF signal. So even human body can block the signal. Secondly, people must have Bluetooth enabled on their phone for this to become operational. And thirdly, when there are too many push notifications that you receive, okay, when you're entering a grocery shop and you're constantly receiving push notifications, then it could get annoying. It could actually go to the extent that uh, you are you're missing out on important messages. So these are some challenges. Now, uh, like BLE, there are even other technologies like Wi-Fi, UWB, and RFID technology. Now, uh, like as you can see, BLE is the only technology which uh, offers quite a good level of accuracy with a good range area detection, and it can track people as well as assets, objects, as well as vehicles. And it's only battery powered, and also the battery lifetime is high. Okay, so there are technologies like, like RFID, which can provide point detection. However, it has limited range, right? Uh, there are technologies like UWB, which cannot be used for tracking people. Okay, and it's also expensive and it consumes huge battery life. So there are trade-offs everywhere. So there are, I just wanted to tell you that like BLE, there are other technologies which can be used for tracking people. Now, uh, so we, we are done with the beacons part. Now we'll move on to the wearable technology or the wearable antenna. So uh, wearable gadgets. So we these days we are using lots of wearable gadgets like biosensors, cameras, computers, and everything. So all these gadgets require one uh, particular device, which is an antenna, for transmitting the signal that they have received. Right. So uh, antennas that are designed on textile material, that are fabricated on textile materials, are textile antennas or cloth antennas. Right? So it's also called a smart clothes. So initially it was uh, designed for military applications. So they were carrying whip antennas. So people, the enemy countries, they could uh, find that the person is carrying uh, carrying a radio. So they, he could be some kind of a spy. So uh, to prevent that, uh, they started integrating antenna as a part of the clothing. So in this picture, you can see here, there's a small micro strip patch antenna, right? It's a part, it's, it's just integrated as a part of a clothing just like a design, right? So it was initially started off for military applications and uh, the other applications, obviously for police and firefighters and augmented reality is uh, a major sector. Uh, so uh, if a person with a camera goes to a mine and he captures the image, captures the video and he transmits it with an antenna, uh, as comfortably sitting in our rooms, we'll be able to see without going to the mine. So that's augmented reality. And it's also used in space applications and healthcare most importantly for patients for, for monit monitoring the uh, heart rate of uh, heart patients so many applications it's used right so uh, yes these are some wearable antennas you can see so this is a smartwatch and this is a, a glass in which there's an antenna and this is a helmet uh, which is used by military people and this is the rf vest antenna and uh, this is the uh, sensor which is there in the shoe and this is a finger ring antenna, and then there's the button antenna. So these are different kinds of antenna that can be worn by us. Now, uh, is it as simple as a normal antenna? Designing and wearable antenna, is it that simple? Definitely no. There are lots of limitations. Firstly, the volume is limited, right? So you don't have all the space, you're going to wear it. So it has to be comfortable, small, thin, and sleek. So that's the first uh, issue. Secondly, it's in proximity to the human body. Human body is a high dielectric material, okay? 
and an antenna needs to be having a low dielectric constant for it to radiate properly so when it's placed when the antenna is placed on the human body there is a chance for the frequency to get detuned and there is a an, a, an aspect called specific absorption rate which is the radiation which is absorbed by the human body right so uh, another uh, aspect is in w band applications right you cannot keep the antenna in a flat position forever so you can keep it on the thigh you might keep it on the arm or even your stomach so it could tend to bend so such uh, things also must be kept in mind and it can also get crumpled when you are keeping it near your armpit so wetness is another major factor wetness due to external factors and this wetness due to our own sweat so these are all the issues that must be kept in mind while designing so based on that you using the following steps we can actually design an antenna first is the textile material selection so firstly how many layers you want and uh, we we can we can select select the substrate such that it is resistant to water right secondly the conductor on the substrate so the conductor the fiber orientation and the conductivity so that is another factor and then is the performance of the antenna okay how does it perform when there is moisture and what are its electrical characteristics what is its response to wrinkles and then is the ground plane optimization so uh, as i said human body is a high dielectric substrate so it's the ground plane that is going to act as a reflecting layer between the antenna and the human body so that is an important factor and yes for enhancing the performance right we are using the so, uh, certain uh, structures like ebgs and amcs so what are these structures they are nothing but band stop filters so these structures they filter out the signal from reaching the human body similarly they also reduce the effect of the human body on the antenna so there are also wide band designs i'll tell you the reason for a wide band design okay and uh, the the antenna must perform well near a human body and another aspect that must be kept in mind is the specific absorption rate we'll talk about that in uh, in detail later so here we can see the antenna three particular antennas which have been designed using three different substrate materials right so here we can see these are various substrate materials we have the commonly used cotton and polyester also uh, which are used as substrates right okay now this is an antenna that has been designed a tri band antenna so the first antenna uh, is designed using copper foil the conductor used is a copper foil and in the second antenna the conductor is also a fabric right so the conductivity variations will be there but still the required performance is obtained even using fabric right okay so as i said the antenna is not going to be flat always so uh, when you are keeping it on the leg it could get bent and when you are keeping it near our armpit it could get crumpled so this is the crumpling test so when the antenna gets crumpled uh, along the yz plane what is the effect and when it's crumpled along the exit plane what is the effect there will be frequency detuning there will be attenuation so we'll have to design the antenna accordingly uh, we have to go in for wide band designs this is the reason why we prefer wide band designs for uh, variable antennas uh, say for example we are designing a bluetooth antenna for 2.4 gigahertz okay and the frequency here in this case itself the frequency is getting detuned to somewhere near 3 gigahertz then what's the point there's no point in designing the antenna but if we are going to design an antenna that's going to operate from 1 to 4 gigahertz then even if there is a frequency detuning the antenna will very well perform at 2.4 gigahertz so that's why we prefer wide band antenna designs for variable antennas now i said there is another important factor which is the specific absorption rate it is nothing but the uh, electromagnetic radiations which are absorbed by the human body okay so its unit is watt per kilogram so usually it's estimated over either the entire body or a particular part or a, a small sample like 1 gram or 10 gram now this is how we are uh, simulating the specific absorption rate uh, when we are designing a particular antenna so here you can see it's a three layer human body model it's a rectangular model similarly we can have cylindrical models or we can exactly replicate a human body also but this is just a simple model for estimating the uh, sar so it's just the skin fat and muscle the permittivity values everything you can just uh, design and you can keep and you can place the antenna on top of that and then you can evaluate the specific absorption rate so according to international electrotechnical commissions the sar limit is 2 watt per kilogram so anything less than that is compliant okay to the standards so uh, how do we measure we can actually 
uh, vary the antenna distance from the human body and we can make an evaluation and we can also vary the thickness of skin fat and muscle for evaluating the antenna at different regions of the human body so this is the simple sar evaluation now uh, here this is uh, an experiment actually uh, this is a measurement that has been performed as i said this is a bending measurement of the antenna and this is the on body measurement of the antenna okay so uh, the sar which i had mentioned okay so this is uh, the sar simulation uh, the output so you can see that when the antenna alone is used okay so you can see uh, a red part which indicates high intensity right high intensity uh, of uh, radiations that are absorbed now that i had mentioned a word called ebgs and amcs they are band stop filters so what do they do is they capture the radiations and they prevent it from being absorbed by the body so when you are using those structures which is in the second case you can see that the intensity is not that high right so you can see that the radiations are spread out so the uh, radiations are not absorbed that much by the human body when you are using structures like amc <coughs> moving so uh, this is about the variable antenna the variable antennas can be used so let me show you the application aspects okay so this is a wristband tag so uh, this is again like a beacon but it's worn by the human body okay so uh, it can be used for tracking a particular person in school or in uh, theme parks or ships so uh, there can be also an alarm when the person goes to a restricted zone so this is an application so there's a housing and there's a microcontroller so this is a disposable uh, wristband watch and uh, this is another uh, uh, application of variable antenna it's a variable tag it's like our id cards okay that we use so uh, you can locate the people in your venue very easily when you use this particular tag and it's very simple it also has an rfid module so instead of uh, using your finger fingerprint for access control you can use these cards and uh, yes and there's also a button so when you press that button what happens is you can call for uh, a panic situation or you can call for uh, some medical emergency or things like that so uh, yes this is the card tag which is a wearable device like a beacon and uh, it's used mostly uh, it's used in many countries these days okay now uh, so we had seen about beacons we had seen about wearable technology now we'll see how to combine them to uh, a particular server okay so there is a device which is called as a gateway it is literally a gateway between the ble beacons tags and the server or the cloud or the internet right so what it does is it has a ble module it has a wifi module okay using the ble module it scans 360 degree and it receives all the ble packets it receives the ble packets and using the wifi module it transmits them to the server so this is the uh, function of the gateway now the gateway can also receive other uh, signals like zigbee z way and other modules right so what are the details it collects it collects the sensor data the battery details of the beacons and the location details so uh, so when people don't carry a smartphone if you want to keep a track of people of the objects of the assets okay then we can use gateways if you want to know the battery levels if you want to know the sensor details if you want to collect the information if you want to locate people then gateways are the answer for that uh so this is about the hardware part okay now there is a protocol that's needed for doing this process as i said the gateway process right so what is the protocol so there are lots of protocols like tcp http so uh, the protocol which is specific for iot applications which is suitable for uh, iot applications is this mqtt it is message queuing telemetry transport it's basically a low bandwidth protocol so it's suitable for iot applications and machine to machine communication so it's basically like this uh, so we are all very familiar with youtube right in youtube uh, when i'm owning a channel and there are many people who have subscribed to my channel right similarly uh, there is a central person who is called as the mqtt broker okay and all others are the clients mqtt clients so so one mqtt client will publish a topic okay so supposing he is publishing a topic called temperature now all the clients who have subscribed to that topic called temperature so whenever he is publishing a temperature value say 70 degree fahrenheit all the clients who have subscribed to that topic will receive the 
value 70 degree fahrenheit okay so just like how uh, whenever we have subscribed to a youtube channel when they publish a video we receive the video immediately we receive a bell notification similarly when a sensor publishes a topic a message in the topic all those who have subscribed to the topic will receive it and this mqtt broker is the central person who will receive all the messages who will filter all the messages who will see who are all the subscribers to this particular message and he'll correctly transmit those messages to those people so this is done by the mqtt broker now uh, based on all this i have just put a simple uh, diagram that will help you understand this so this is a beacon right so what is this beacon doing it is transmitting data with a certain strength in all directions so the the, the packet could be an i beacon packet or it could be an eddystone packet right and uh, any mobile uh, which is ios or android compatible can receive this, these packets now there's a mobile phone the mobile phone needs to have three requirements firstly it should have a bluetooth connectivity an internet connection and a suitable bluetooth app now the moment it receives a big uh, packet ble packet the app will be launched okay and there's the cloud now it will ask the cloud it, it has just received a simple packet which has numbers so it, it is it does not understand so the app is asking the cloud for what it has to do so the packet goes to the cloud the cloud does all the processing and it also interacts with other servers and other systems and it returns what it has to do and then app performs the activity whatever it has to perform say it it will uh, get a message or it will uh, get an alarm or it will get uh, get a particular uh, link or whatever okay sometimes the uh, app also interacts with various other servers so all these actions so many actions take place almost instantly so this is a simple data packet ble data packet processing uh so yes now we'll move on now it's all about the application so how where and all uh, are these packets applied so uh, firstly as i said it's used for location tracking so the first is a hospital environment right so you can see that uh, there is a particular device so uh, it's having a sensor so the value the sensor value is updated by the ble and whenever there is some error in the device okay the person will get an intimation the service person will get a notification that this, that something is wrong in this device so he will also get the uh, direction for that particular location so it makes things simplified now here is another example this is an office environment okay so uh, here uh, conference rooms are always a big problem in offices so uh, this person is updating this uh, the conference room is vacant and anybody who has a de uh, demand can immediately go for it and uh, here is a location tracking so if you want to go to a particular office particular person to meet a particular person it will direct you very correctly okay so th this is how it's used in the office environment so everybody who has either a tag or a mobile phone or a, a laptop with the location is properly located right so uh, using the employee apps what happens if you want to immediately track where your colleague is you can track and you can uh, if a new person who's visiting the office has to meet a person it's very beautifully done the moment he enters the car parking he will be uh, receiving a visiting card and he he will be receiving a direction uh, as to how he has to go to that particular office so everything is made easy and uh, uh, and it helps the management in a lot of ways so uh, the management will have a view of uh, the location where a person is and location based push notifications can be given suppose a person is near a lab they can just tell him you can finish this work and come back so instead of sending another person to that particular location the same person can be made to do uh, based on his location so uh, there are lots of applications of uh, this employee apps and personal tracking so uh, for uh, starting from access control to location based push notifications it, it's very efficiently used in office buildings and as i said in retail it's used very highly so you 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 must have received lots of notifications on your mobile phone regarding a discount or an offer so this is very personalized this beacon technologies so here in the first image you can see a person standing nearby a particular uh, part in the uh, in the departmental store and there's a beacon okay so the beacon is emitting a message to the phone so uh, the moment the ble packet is received by the phone the corresponding app is launched as we saw in the uh, animated diagram so the app is launched and then it immediately asks the server as to what it has to do so uh, and the server the person who is operating that he will have 
an entire picture based on the foot traffic he will have a rich profile of you how many times you have uh, you visited this departmental store how many times have you visited this portion of the uh, departmental store and and which product you are most interested so based on that he will give you a customized discount say for this product you will receive a discount of 20% so it is more personalized so he knows you he knows your pattern so uh, this is the kind of uh, way in which the retail is helping the customers and in this way the the store is also benefited uh, the management they'll be able to see based on the foot traffic information uh, the region or the part where people are most visiting so it is this product which has higher demand so they will probably increase the purchase of that particular product or if some portion some zone is not visited they'll see uh, how can they market that product how can they make people uh, come towards that particular product so in in a various ways in a variety of ways they can make better decisions based on this technology and it's also widely used in a lot of countries uh, so now finally we'll see how this particular uh, technology can be used during this particular pandemic situation right so as i said uh, instead of the uh, fingerprint technology we are using the uh, tags right so uh, so this fingerprint could lead to contact surface contact so it could uh, lead to a, a chance for spreading of the virus so instead if you are using the tag okay or if you are using face recognition then it can be combated right so uh, and also in airports how can this be used like uh, you can constantly uh, using beacons you can constantly send push notifications about sanitizer stations when a person is nearing a sanitizer station you can just send a push notification and you can go sanitize his hand and come back uh, or when there is a restroom you can get a push notification you can go uh, wash and come back so uh, similarly we can avoid using touch screen kiosks as in uh if we are using a touch screen in a mall or in an airport then you will have to go to that particular location touch and many people will be using that as such right so instead of that uh if the same information is available on your own mobile it will uh reduce surface contact right so these are all the different ways in which uh, this particular technology can be used so now we saw all the general ways now i'll just show you a particular system okay a particular method using which uh, uh, contact tracing can be done as well as uh, disinfection can be done right so uh, like uh, usually in companies right uh, there are certain industries there are uh, certain sectors where people cannot afford to work from home so there is the food processing industry there is the pharmaceutical industry then uh, there is the water uh, uh, system there is the electricity system wherein people have to go back to workplace so in this kind of a situation uh, if if one person or if a few of them get infected then should the entire plant be locked down should the enti entire industry be locked down should everybody be made to stay at home it's not actually possible so uh, it's for these reasons that these kind of systems have been implemented so it's uh, so as i said uh this system is going to have both the wearable technology as well as the beacon technology so together uh, they are going to be used for combating the effect of the pandemic okay so this is these are all the wearable devices like the wearable tags right so they are programmable devices you can program various aspects and they have an lte module okay and what do they do they are also beacons so they transmit their identity they transmit their uid continuously they also scan for signals from other devices so these are all the uh, aspects of that particular wearable device now suppose th this is how the people are interacting so let's assume these four people are wearing this wearable device okay now uh, suppose these two people are coming close okay they're reducing the social distancing they're breaking the social distancing norms they're coming uh, closer uh, than 1 meter okay then in that case what happens a light starts uh, blinking and there is also an alarm sound which is cautioning them to maintain social distancing right okay now what happens is this particular device this particular wearable device will receive uh, the beacon packets from the other devices uh, with whom it has been in contact it will store in it is in its memory and there's also the central server okay central database and dashboard so it will collect 
those inputs and it will send it across to the secure dashboard okay so it will send it will push all those information to the secure dashboard now every all the information that it is collected it is now in the secure da database it is safe it is stored and it is also anonymized uh, this is to ensure the privacy of the people. So uh, you, anybody and everybody cannot go and tamper. So there's only one person who's authorized to access that. He could be a risk manager. So only he can go and authorize and see who has been in contact with whom. So such information are very, very personalized, right? Okay. Now, following this, what happens is now, uh, okay, suppose this person who is wearing this particular tag, uh, he is developing some symptoms, okay, and he's at his home and he has developed some symptoms. So immediately he is pressing the push button. So the moment he presses the push button, what happens is using it goes to the cellular network and through the this is why this is where the LTE comes in use. So it is updated in the central dashboard in the secure dashboard. It is updated that this particular person has developed symptoms. So please caution the people who have been in contact with this person. So the risk manager who is operating this, he simply presses a button. So the moment he presses this particular button, a notification is sent to all the employees who have been in close contact with this person. So in this case, there are only these two people who have been in contact. So this is just a small example. There are so many people, uh, people who are working in an office. So it's just a small miniature. OK, so these two people have been in contact. So a notification is sent to them. So they uh, get a blink on their device. Optionally, they also get uh, an, a message on their phone which directs them to do the next series of steps. Say, go isolate yourself for 14 days or go have a checkup from the doctor or whatever it is. So they will get the next series of steps. Now, uh, so this is for contact tracing. Okay, So instead of manually asking who all have you been in contact with, it's not uh, possible, right? So it's, it's not humanly possible. So instead of that, this technology, using this technology, we can get to know who all has been in contact. And those people alone can be isolated. Instead of isolating hundreds and thousands of people who have not been in contact, just the 20, 30 who have been in contact alone can be isolated. Now, uh, this is for contact tracing. Now, as far as the disinfection part, OK? I said every room will be having a beacon, a proximity beacon. Okay, So this particular wearable device, it will not only receive the inputs from other wearable devices, it will also receive inputs from the uh, beacons which are there in the rooms. right? So it is receiving this uh, particular token. Okay, So the moment it receives the packet, again, it transmits it to the server. Fine, the location details are trans transmitted. So the server gets updated that this person A has been to conference room, has he has been to classroom A, he has been to the lab room, he has been to these places. So that updation comes to the secure database. Okay. So the moment when he pushes, when the push button is pressed, what happens? This is the region. So uh, there will be a map of the entire office space. So the region where he has been alone will be highlighted. So only those regions can be uh, given for disinfection. So instead of uh, disinfecting the entire office space, only those specific regions can be marked and it can be given for disinfection, right? So uh, this is how we're using the technology for uh, even this particular crisis, right? Uh, in this particular critical situation wherein uh, it could lead to a mass shutdown, it could uh, lead to everybody going back to their homes. So this can be prevented in this way. So yes, uh, that's about it. So we had uh, seen about uh, the IoT technology and uh, we had seen about the beacons, right? Uh, we had seen about wearable technology and uh, we had seen how beacons and wearable technology are being applied in the office space in hospitals and most importantly in retail and uh, and apart from that how this particular technology can be used now in these days uh, during this critical pandemic situation to uh, reduce the effects of further transmission so this is uh, this was about it okay so, thank you Ma'am, thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you so much thank for your uh, nice presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Just, uh, uh, let me uh, look into the uh, chat box for any questions. Sure.
Ma'am, can you explain about the location tracking once again? Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, I'll just explain it like that, right? Okay. So uh, there are uh, so there is a beacon and there is a smartphone, right? So the moment uh, the beacon transmits a particular packet, the smartphone receives a value called RSSI. So there is a reference RSSI and there is also the actual RSSI. So based on these two values using a formula, we can calculate the distance. So distance from that particular beacon can be estimated, right? Similarly, uh, we know the concept of trilateration, like in satellites. So when three beacons are there, when three beacons are deployed, so there will be three circles and there will be one point of collision for the three. So that will be the exact position of that particular person. So this is the technology that is that has been used for tracking. So for tracking the accurate position of the person. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And the best, uh, I think, uh, Deepak Shukla asked one question. Yeah. Uh, uh, is it basically used uh, only for IoT based upon sensor technology or beacon or sensor? So I think questions are not clear. Questions yeah. are not clear, I think so. And see, once you ask, I'll uh, see a key. Once you ask, uh, is basically used only for IoT based upon sensor technology or peak sensor sensor so okay maybe i think uh, i can probably answer you like this uh, beacons mobility sensor, motion sensors. So what these sensors do is they collect those values. And in Eddystone, there is an option called TLM, Eddystone telemetry. So the beacons can also transmit these sensor values. So yeah, probably as far as I have understood the question, I think this would be the answer. Thank you. Uh, Um, thank you, thank you so much for your uh, timing. And uh, thank you. So it is our great pleasure to hear from you. Thank you, thank and, you so uh, much, sir. So uh, all the best for your uh, future research. And I think uh, you have done uh, uh, the world thank you. Thank of the so uh, area which is uh, going to rule the world in the forthcoming okay. years. So yes, sir. Uh, we wish you a lot for you to come up thank with the new technology which is uh, which will be highly useful to the uh, our society. And well, thank sure, you so much. Sure, sure. Thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. 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 Th